Katirov's troops are leaving checkpoints in the temporarily occupied territory of the Kherson region. They are being completely replaced by Russians. This was reported by Channel 24, citing sources. In addition, it became known that on the left bank of the Kherson region, Katirov's men had showdowns with Dagestanis. These conflicts ended in fights. According to the source, one of Katirov's men in the temporarily occupied territory reported that their troops were returning home to Chechnya. That is why Russians are now manning the checkpoints. Regarding the conflicts with the Dagestanis, the source noted that this happened in Kalinchak. The reason was obviously the conflict between Ramzan Kadyrov and the senator from Dagestan, billionaire Suleyman Karimov. Recently, Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov has accused Russian lawmakers from neighboring regions of attempting to commission his assassination and threatened them with a blood feud unless they prove otherwise. There are witnesses, there are people from whom they tried to commission, whom they asked how much they would take for the order, he said. Kadyrov accused state Duma deputies Bikan Barakoyev and Rizvan Kurbanov, as well as influential billionaire and Federation Council Senator Suleyman Karimov, of plotting to kill him. The three lawmakers are originally from Ingushetia and Dagestan, two Russian republics and neighboring Chechnya. If they do not prove otherwise, I will officially declare a blood feud," he was quoted as saying. In Chechnya, blood feuds are a traditional custom of extracting revenge by killing an enemy or his male relatives. Chechnya borders both Dagestan and Ingushetia, and Kadyrov has in the past laid claim to parts of both regions' territory. Two federal lawmakers have denied ordering the assassination of Ramzan Kadyrov after he declared a blood feud against them and a senator amid a dispute over the merger of Russia's largest online retailer Wildberries. Barakoyev denied Kadyrov's accusation that he was involved in an alleged assassination plot. With Allah as a witness, I declare that I knew nothing about this, Barakoyev was quoted as saying by the independent news outlet Fortanga. Multiple felony charges including murder were filed against ethnic Chechens involved in the incident and the ex-husband of Wildberry CEO Tatiana Kim, Vladislav Bakelchuk, who sought Kadyrov's help to block the merger between the e-commerce giant and the smaller outdoor advertising group Russ. Eighteen North Korean servicemen who attempted to escape from the positions of Russian occupation forces in the Kursk region were detained by Russians in the Komarishsky district of the Bryansk region. Yunayan was informed of this by sources in the main intelligence directorate. It is noted that about 40 military instructors from North Korea, together with 50 Russian occupiers, were in positions in the forest in the Kolyatek area of the Komotovsky district of the Kursk region. It has been established that the North Koreans were training servicemen of the Russian armed forces in the use of balloons for military purposes. In exchange, servicemen of the Russian armed forces trained representatives of North Korea in modern infantry combat using the experience of the so-called SVO. After completing the training course, the North Korean servicemen were left in a forest in the Kolyachek area of the Komutovsky district for several days without food and without instructions regarding further plans and intentions. On October the 14th, some of the North Koreans decided to voluntarily leave their positions in order to search for the command of the Russian armed forces, intelligence sources said. Two days later, on October the 16th, the missing servicemen were found and detained by Russian occupiers. The distance from the escape site was about 60 kilometers. According to the agency's source, all 40 North Korean servicemen who were in positions in the Komotovsk district have now been moved to the Logovsky district of the Kursk region for further involvement in assault operations in the Kursk region. Russian insider project VCHK OGPU, with reference to its own sources in military circles, say that all North Korean servicemen may be sent to the front in the Kursk region. Wood for dugouts and trenches is already being prepared for them. It is noted that in the Kursk region, the Russians have been cutting down trees for a week so that the Koreans would receive materials for equipping positions. North Korean servicemen may be sent to the Kursk region. According to sources, Russian armed forces soldiers have been cutting down trees in this area for a week now for the arrival of guests. The wood is allegedly being harvested so that the new arrivals can independently equip their own positions and dugouts. The project notes. According to Ivan Kamachko, 
Chairman of the Council of Reservists of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, military personnel from North Korea are already participating in the Russian war against Ukraine. It is expected that the Russian Federation will send military personnel from North Korea to the battlefield in the Kursk region. Russian losses in the Kursk region have increased. The 95th separate Polesi Airborne Assault Brigade of the Airborne Assault Troops of the Armed Forces of Ukraine continue to effectively take revenge on the Russian 155th separate Marine Brigade of the Pacific Fleet for the murder of Ukrainian prisoners of war. Ukrainian paratroopers near the village of Leonido in the Kursk region surrounded a platoon of the 155th Brigade and minus enemy armored vehicles as well as dozens of opponents, writes Forbes. The Ukrainian airborne assault troops reported that soldiers from the 95th Brigade had recently destroyed approximately 30 Marines and three of their armored personnel carriers as a result of a multi-hour battle. The enemy's teleportation to hell was carried out in a complex manner. First, the first enemy armored personnel carrier was damaged by a strike drone, after which the enemy's equipment was disintegrated into atoms by a precise shot from a tank, the Polesi Airborne Assault Brigade noted. The Ukrainian army added that the second enemy armored personnel carrier was in the sights of the Javelin anti-tank missile system operator and the anti-tank paratrooper destroyed it with one shot. The third Marine APC was blown to smithereens after running over a mine that had been carefully prepared for its path by the sappers of the 95th. Recall members of the 155th Separate Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet have been accused more than once of killing Ukrainian prisoners of war. In particular, the media wrote that enemy Marines launched an attack near the village of Zeleniput in Kursk Oblast in early October and were able to capture Ukrainian drone operators and contractors. According to journalists, the enemy stripped Ukrainian soldiers to their underwear and killed them with shots to the head. Ukrainian paratroopers took revenge on the 155th Enemy Brigade. They actively eliminated the enemy in Kursk region. The Ukrainian side called for the issuance of warrants from the International Criminal Court for the arrest of Russian occupiers involved in the murders of Ukrainian soldiers.